Welcome to my complete Dart course for beginners and beyond. This video contains the first chapter of this course and I've decided to share this for free here on YouTube. And if you're serious about learning Dart, you should consider buying my full course on Udemy. This will include over 8 hours of content and comes with premium support as well as a complete reference ebook about Dart. And you can buy the full course for a discounted price by typing this URL in your browser. With that said, enjoy my course and let's get started. In this course, you will learn everything you need to know to get started programming with Dart. We will start from the basics and gradually introduce more and more concepts along the way. And I'd like to give you some advice so that you can make the most of this course. As a starting point, you can watch the videos and this is a great way to learn a lot of new concepts. And if you don't understand something, don't be afraid to stop and watch the video again. Next, I highly recommend that you code with me as we go along because doing things is a great way to learn. So as you follow along, don't be afraid to pause the video and try to replicate all the steps that I take. By doing this, you'll be forcing yourself to really understand the concepts that we cover and that way you'll get a lot more value rather than just copying my code. By the way, if some lessons are too easy for you, feel free to increase the speed of the video player. This may happen at the beginning where we cover the basics, but as we make progress we will cover more advanced topics, so feel free to slow things down and take the time to understand the contents. And if you really don't understand something, you can bookmark it and come back to it later, and you'll find that things that seem difficult the first time around become easier after you've seen them a few times and had the time to explore them in more detail. Also, I have included many exercises to help you build your confidence. After each exercise, I'll show you the solution, but I encourage you to try and solve it by yourself first and then compare your solution with mine. That way, you'll be able to see what could be improved in your solution or maybe just see a different way of doing things. This course also comes with an official GitHub repository, which you can find at this URL. This contains a complete syllabus so that you can more easily see how the course is structured. And over here you can find all the exercises along with their solutions. And all exercises and their solutions are numbered so that each exercise is a file that starts with the section number followed by the lesson number within that section. Also, some exercises will include some source code that you can use as a starting point so that you don't have to type everything by hand and you can focus on finding the solution instead. So this repository is a good resource that you can use as you take the course. And in the future, I will include any bonus materials in here. Next, let's talk about the QA section. If you get stuck or something is not clear, you can ask questions in the QA section of this course. And remember that the QA section is just as useful for you as it is for other students. And a great way to consolidate your knowledge is to try to answer questions from other students. In any case, I follow this section very actively myself, so as long as you ask questions that are relevant to the course material, I'll do my best to answer them within 24 hours. However, keep in mind that when you are on a real job as a software developer, I won't be there to hold your hand. And what professional software developers do when they get stuck is to go on Google or Stack Overflow and try to find an answer to their problem. This works because most of the time you won't be the first person to have that problem and it's likely that the answer that you're looking for is already there. So I encourage you to get familiar with Stack Overflow and make the most of it. And if you can't find the answer you're looking for, you can post a new question yourself. In summary, all the videos, exercises, extra materials and the QA section are there to help you along the way. So don't give up and practice, practice, practice because practice is the only way to master a new skill. So I'm very excited to help you along this journey so that you can master the Dart language. In this lesson, I'm going to give you an overview about the Dart programming language. Dart is the language behind Flutter, and with Flutter you can ship native applications on iOS, Android, web and beyond from a single code base. To enable this, Flutter uses Dart, which is a programming language that works across all these different platforms and also gives you a fast development experience. As you build your apps with Flutter, you can take advantage of Hot Reload. Hot Reload works by injecting your updated code into your running app and then rebuilds your UI in less than a second so that you can see your changes instantly. So let's take a closer look at the Dart language so that we can understand how it works. To create a Flutter app, you can write some source code to define how your app looks and behaves. 
And as we have learned, Flutter apps can run on Android, iOS, desktop, and web. So in order for your app to run on any of these platforms, your source code needs to be compiled. And compilation is the process of taking some source code and transforming it into an executable binary file that can run on your target platform. So in order to run a Flutter app, you need two steps compilation and execution. And most languages are optimized for either fast compile time and slow execution time, or slow compile time and fast execution time. So having a fast compile time is good for you as a developer because you can more quickly iterate and make changes to your code. But fast execution time is important for your users who expect apps to start quickly and run smoothly. So what is unique about the Dart language is its flexibility, because when you are developing apps, you can use the so-called just-in-time compiler, which is optimized for fast compile times, and this is what enables hot reload in Flutter. On the other hand, when you want to release your app to your users, you can use the so-called ahead-of-time compiler, which is optimized for fast execution times. And because Dart supports both just-in-time and ahead-of-time compilation, you get the best from both of them. So while there are other languages that can be optimized for fast execution times, Dart is the only language that enables this across all these platforms. In addition to that, if you are building for web, then the compilation process is different. And in this case, your Dart code is compiled to JavaScript code that can run on the browser. And also, you can use Dart to create common lineups. And when you use it this way, Dart code is compiled to an intermediate language that runs on the so-called Dart Virtual Machine, or VM, and we will create some common lineups as part of this course. So not only you can use Dart to build Flutter apps on mobile, desktop, and web, but you can also write common lineups, as well as write backend code for your apps. So Dart is very versatile. Okay, so this completes our overview about the Dart compiler. And if some of this is not clear, then don't worry. For now, the important thing to remember is that Dart is a flexible language because it can be compiled to multiple platforms, it is very productive because it supports hot reload, and it is optimized for fast execution times when it's compiled in release mode. Okay, so we have talked about how Dart code is compiled and executed, but what language features does Dart have? Dart is an object-oriented language, meaning that we can use it to structure our code inside classes and classes hold both data as well as the methods that we can use to manipulate it. And we will see exactly what this means as we make progress. Also, Dart is a statically typed language, meaning that all types are checked at compile time before execution, and this helps us write programs that are safer and more predictable. Again, we will learn about types in detail in the course. Finally, Dart uses a C-style syntax, which is similar to Java or JavaScript, so if you have used any of these languages before, you'll find the Dart syntax very familiar. In any case, you don't need to worry about anything, because Dart is an easy language to learn. We will go through all the language features in detail, and I will explain everything that you need to know. Ok, so let's continue on the next lesson. One of the best things about Dart is that it comes with Dartpad, which is an online editor that we can use to write and run Dart code directly on the browser, and you can access this at dartpad.dev. Dartpad is a great tool to learn the language and experiment, because we can run code and very quickly see the output. Throughout this course we will use Dartpad to explore the various features of the Dart language, and also to complete all the exercises so that you can practice and consolidate your knowledge. So let's take a tour of Dartpad. On the left we have the code editor, this is where we write the Dart code that we want to execute, and we can run it by pressing this button. On the right side we find this console that prints all the output from our code, and also we have this documentation panel that we can use to inspect the documentation for some of the code that we are using. In addition to this, if there are any errors in our code, then these are highlighted and reported on the bottom right corner. Finally, at the top we have some useful commands that we can use to create new paths, reset or format our code. And I should mention that you can use Dartpad to create both Dart and Flutter apps, but in this course we will focus exclusively on Dart. By the way, on the bottom right corner you can find the Dart version that is currently in use with Dartpad. And at the time I'm recording this course, the latest stable version is Dart 2.8.4.
However, this course also covers the latest null safety features that were included in Dart 2.9. For this reason, we will also be using a special version of DartPad that supports null safety, and you can find this at nullsafety.dartpad.dev. So we will start the course by using the regular DartPad, and as we make progress, we will switch to DartPad with null safety so that we can cover the latest features. Okay, so this completes our overview of DartPad, so let's continue on the next lesson. In this lesson, I'd like to share a gift with you, which will be a great complement to all the video content in this course. So, as a student of my course, you'll have access to this free ebook, which is a complete reference to the Dart language. This contains over 150 pages of content, covering all the features of the Dart language, along with some extra materials on good coding principles in Dart. So, on one hand, you have this video course, which introduces the Dart language gradually, with plenty of exercises and practical projects that you can use to build your confidence. On the other hand, the ebook is a valuable reference that you can use to look things up when you build your own Dart and Flutter apps. So, this ebook is a free sample of a larger book called the Flutter Complete Reference, and as a Flutter instructor, I'm happy to be a supporter of this project. And if you purchase my paid course, you have access to this ebook as well. This is the end of the first chapter of my course. As a reminder, you can buy the full course on Udemy and get access to all the premium content that will not be included here on YouTube. So type this URL in your browser to buy my full course for a discounted price. Thank you very much for watching and if you found this useful, please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.